Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about something that I believe needs to be discussed when you're thinking about gambling. Just like you have strengths and weaknesses, just like some days you're sharper mentally and more focused than you are on other days, just like there are some situations that fit your personality and some that don't, I believe it's the same way in boxing. I believe there are personality types out there that when you encounter them, you need to be careful because even if you watch film and you see that a guy has holes in his game, sometimes the guy's mental toughness, approach, ability to adapt, desire, can actually trump his shortcomings. Right now, let me tell you, um, just to back up even more, and I know the video's hopelessly touchy-feely, especially to the hardcore boxing crowd. But when you see a self-made guy, when you see a guy who has been an entrepreneur, right? Isn't just following the normal water pattern, but is actually swimming upstream. You know the personality type I'm talking about, right? He has taken on the boxing establishment. He has challenged promoters, might have even sued a promoter. In fact, the fighter, when he's not fighting, has been a promoter. When you look at the fighter's resume and you see that the fighter early on has skipped the normal career trajectory and has taken on tough guy after tough guy, when you see a fight in which the guy has been dropped, look at the Yuzelka fight, right? When you see a fight where the guy's been dropped, has gotten off the canvas, hurt, has sucked it up, and then later physically imposes himself on the guy who just dropped him. In fact, let me digress a bit. Carl Frotch, George Groves, right? Let me just say, a guy who gets off the canvas hurt, stays in the fight and continues to throw big shots, that needs to register with the public when you're thinking about that guy in future fights. Well, when you come across this personality type, and this personality type is fighting an opponent who is likewise mentally tough, right? One of the secrets to Bernard Hopkins is that Bernard Hopkins has taken on the boxing establishment. Understand, when you look at Hopkins' history outside the ring, you're going to see that Hopkins, who right now is one of the principals in Golden Boy Promotions, has been a self-made man who has fought the establishment who's an individualist outside of the ring. Understand his opponent, Babu Chuminov, has the same personality type. He's overcome the odds, right? This guy really is a boxing businessman who just also happens to be one of the light heavyweight champions. Right now, Shumanov has holes in his game. 
the Gabriel Campillo fight, if you want to see a fight where he struggled against a guy who has the kind of slickness that Bernard Hopkins has in the ring, you can look at that film. But I'll tell you what, I'm across the street on this fight. Simply put, to me, Beba Chumanov has that same drive, that same beating the odds that Seattle Seahawk quarterback Russell Wilson has. Right? One of the things I've learned is to not bet against guys like this, right? Especially when Chumanov also happens to be one of the best athletes in the sport. Maybe he's not a great boxer right now, but he's an athlete. And understand, when you find these self-made entrepreneurial types, right, whether in boxing or in life, understand for them, life comes down to a series of equations. They think differently than most. They're thinking in terms of markets, supply, demand. How can I provide those goods and services? Their big picture. They're signing the front of checks, not the back of checks, for the people they work with. Right? When you come across this kind of broad vision, Floyd Mayweather right now, right? All I'm saying is these guys don't get caught up in the hype. They understand the bigger picture, right? Trumanoff is a better athlete than Hopkins. Hopkins is talking about doing mind tricks on Shumanoff. Good luck with that, right? There's a difference between an athlete who's been pampered given advances before he has earned them in the ring, who starts out well connected, who is getting handed titles without fighting the best in the weight class. In fact, sometimes these guys end up in elimination matches and they aren't even fighting guys who are wearing the belt, such as the politics of boxing. Just to understand for every over pampered fighter, there's the other side of the coin. The guy who's had to do it the hard way. Right? The guy who literally, you know, is setting up his own fights. That's Babu Chumanov. I think you need to know about that before you put any money on this Hopkins battle. Because the one thing I promise you is that at the beginning of the fight, Shumanov is not going to be intimidated by Bernard Hopkins. I can guarantee you that at the beginning of the fight, Shumanov is not going to be intimidated by the crowd. Right? This is an Anthony Mundine type of personality. Right? These guys put together events. You know, they haven't relied on superstar promoters. They fought multiple fights against opponents with vastly more experience than they have. Take a look at Shumanov's record on BoxRec. Right? They've even faced adversity in the ring. Let me briefly talk about fight style. Bernard Hopkins fights slow early in fights right his strategy is to turn the fight into a chess match you'll see him in most fights start slow and try to read the other opponent right Hopkins in my opinion is a great athlete for 49 years old but he's not a great athlete when compared to younger fighters, fighters a generation below him. He's not going to be the athlete in this fight. Shumanov, by contrast, is explosive. 
for all of his problems, one of them's pacing. He's a spectacular athlete. When he hits the top floor, in terms of being aggressive and throwing punches, right? Throwing hard punch after hard punch, few in the sport can hang with him. Because Hopkins is a slow starter, there is the possibility that Shumanoff wins the early rounds, right? Then Shumanoff, quite frankly, you know, as he starts to get picked apart, in my opinion, has the foot speed to move around the ring. Now, I expect Hopkins to win this fight, but not enough to bet on the fight. My advice to everyone watching this video is to proceed with caution, right? Head games don't work against guys with the big picture. They just don't, right? Now, let's talk about a guy who I believe head games will work with because I believe the big picture is missing from this guy's analysis. Let's talk about the Miguel Cotto. Sergio Martinez fight. Now in boxing they have a long tradition. And it's a position quite it's a tradition quite frankly that the champion has earned. If you're the champion, then the other guy's supposed to enter the ring first. That's just the way it is. The only time there should be really an argument over who enters the ring first is when it's a unification match. Right then, guys will work out whatever they work out. Right? Fair enough. Then we can hear about who's the more popular fighter or where is the fight, is the fight in one guy's hometown, etc. But understand, I'm from the school of thought that if the fight's for one guy's title, then that guy has the absolute right to enter the ring last. I believe a challenger has to be full of himself to even think otherwise. And I don't care how great a fighter is, right? You can be a spectacular fighter. The bottom line is, for example, if Bernard Hopkins were to fight Marco Huck or let's say Johan Hernandez, the current cruiserweight champion, for Hernandez's cruiserweight belt, even though Hopkins has a belt in a different weight class, it's the title that's at stake in the fight that should dictate who enters the ring last. Well, let me just say, apparently Miguel Cotto, according to reports online, gave champion Sergio Martinez's team an ultimatum. Right, Cotto, who doesn't have a belt at 160, apparently demanded that he be the one who entered the ring last. Ridiculous. Right now, let me just say, I believe the Kodo personality type, and I know Kodo has been through wars, right? I know Kodo is a boxing free agent, a trailblazer in many ways. But when you see something like this, you understand that Cotto, quite frankly, has some self-image personality problems, right? The kind that an opponent can actually play with, right? Just in terms of psychological games. I imagine Bernard Hopkins would have a field day with Miguel Cotto, right? So, too, Sergio Martinez is having a field day with Miguel Cotto. When you encounter a guy who's completely full of himself who insists on petty things like this, you can turn it against him by openly mocking him. 
Obviously, Kodo has a certain level of self-importance that doesn't allow himself to lower himself to the normal traditions of boxing. Apparently, he's more special than these traditions. Right? The rules don't apply to him. Even though he hasn't won the middleweight title, he should be treated like a middleweight champion, at least in his mind. When you encounter a personality like this, right, you can literally just point out the guy's outrageous demands, the guy's false sen sense of self-importance. You don't even have to make it personal. All you have to do is say, look, as Sergio Martinez has done, this fight wouldn't happen if I, the champion, didn't agree to allow Miguel Cotto to pretend he's the champion when we walk in the ring. Right? This fight wouldn't happen if I had not agreed to pretend that I'm challenging for Miguel Cotto's belt by walking in the ring before Miguel Cotto. Right? I don't care, as an old time fan, I don't care who is more popular. Hasn't the champion earned the right to walk in the ring last? Isn't it ridiculous when you're talking about a fight? A championship fight. To get caught up over who enters the ring first when one guy has a title? Let me point out too that I give Sergio Martinez a lot of credit for bringing this to the public's attention. Because to Martinez, it's laughable. Right? Martinez agreed to it. He's laughing. Isn't this the kind of thing that, quite frankly, is depleting to Miguel Cotto? Having his opponent laugh at him, view him as petty, view him as foolishly self-important, how could this help Miguel Cotto? Right? I just found it fascinating. Um, one wonders if Cotto's focused on the fight or is focused on appearances before the fight. Right? Whoever comes in the ring first in that matchup, and apparently Martinez, the champ, has agreed to. Right, And let me also point out the obvious. Martinez has been the middleweight champion for years. The guy he won the belt against has actually retired. One of his defenses of his belt was against the guy who had beaten him earlier, Paul Williams. Right, Two other defenses that he had were against guys who were, in fact, three others were against guys who were unbeaten. Understand, he beat a guy, Darren Barker, who later became middleweight champion of a different sanctioning body. Right? Understand, too, another defense that Martinez had. In fact, Martinez has fought four unbeaten fighters. Four. Right? Darren Barker, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., Sergi Eisen Zurich, and Martin Murray. Right? In addition, he beat guys like Matthew Macklin. Right? Understand, Martinez has even engaged in a unification match. Right? In the division. Think about it. So when you look at this guy's title reign, which goes back years, and the guy he beat to get the title was Kelly Pavlik. Right? When you look at his reign, right? And I believe, by the way, the only other guy to beat Pavlik is Bernard Hopkins. Understand, this is one of the most impressive reigns of any champion in any weight class 
within the last five years. And understand that Martinez right now is really putting himself in the picture with other great middleweight champions. Right? Multi-year reign, fighting several tough opponents, right? Winning a unification match, beating a guy who beat him before. Right? That's how Martinez is doing it. So for some challenger who, let's face it, it's not even a middleweight, right? To fight Martinez and then claim that he somehow has earned the right to enter the ring after the middleweight champion, that's a joke. I see stuff like this and I'm less than impressed. I'm expecting Martinez to win that fight I think I have another video up already, but let's just say that that's the kind of small thinking that you're not going to find in the hopkins Shumanov fight. So, as you analyze fighters and as you think about who they are, you know, I need for you to just consider the possibility <clears throat> that the moment isn't too big for Babu Trumanoff. I don't know if he wins the fight. Folks, the one thing I do know, though, is that I'm not betting on the fight. Right? Hopkins became the oldest champion. Recognized champion. I know the Hollowfield people will disagree with this. But Hopkins became the oldest recognized champion when he was 46. Right, I believe that was when George Foreman's record fell. Right, Hopkins is now 49 years old, folks. Has anyone done the math here? He's three years past being the oldest. Sooner or later, some young lion is going to come out and prove too young, fresh, and fast for him. Right, my point to you is, even though Shumanov doesn't have... Hopkins level skill, right? And again, just look at the Compillo fight, right? Shumanov can be controlled somewhat by a jab. Just understand, it's this kind of hungry lion who's not going to be intimidated by Hopkins, who's going to come after Hopkins, right? It's this kind of young lion who can dethrone an older king. This is a dangerous fight. I'm keeping my hands in my pocket on it. My recommendation to gamblers is that you look hard at this fight before you bet on it. Let me hear from you. To the people who believe Hopkins is going to win, or to the people who believe Babu Shumanov is going to pull an upset. Let me hear from you. Both guys fought William Joppy. William Joppy got overwhelmed by both guys. Obviously, Joppy fought Hopkins years ago and fought Shumanov more recently. Those films are a good basis of comparison between the two guys. Shumanov is much more physical than Bernard Hopkins. Much more physical. That's hard to be. Right? Shumanov is much more explosive. Hopkins is much more skilled. Hopkins knows how to counterpunch better. Hopkins is much better defensively than Shumanov. I think this is a dangerous fight. I'll be watching from across the street. Let me hear how you're going to handle it. Thanks for stopping by.